The key to success on the field and in your backyard is a comprehensive game plan. So if you're building a fence or a deck this year, trust a Terkstra coach to design, quote, or order the right materials for your project. Visit a Terkstra lumber near you to learn more. From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. Welcome to the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That's me. This is the first episode of the regular season for 2020. Each week, I get a chance to chat with Orlando Steinauer, head coach of the Hamilton Tie Cats, uh, right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network for insight and updates as we go through the season. The Coach O Show is presented by Turkstra Lumber. If you're thinking of tackling a project in your home, talk to a project coach at Turkstra Lumber. They can help with everything from ordering a new front door to designing your new deck or fence. Do it yourself does not mean do it alone. Visit TurkstraLumber.com to learn more. Coach, it's great to see you, man. How's it going? It's going well, man. It's great to be seen. Good to see you too, man. Awesome. Finished up a, uh, a day three for, for week one in the books. Yeah, you know how it is. That's the game day. That's the Perfect. game day, day three on and off. Watch a little film after practice. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hopping on the flight and seeing where we're at in 2022. I love day threes. You, you, it's such a, such a crisp, you know, just ready to go feeling, you, you know, you get a whole 48 hours to get your legs right. You can, you can get a healthy sweat in on the field and then you are just mentally sharpening, sharpening up and, and getting right. Doing your, doing your day three massage or hot tub, cold tub, whatever it is. Always, always the, always the best day of the week. And uh, then, then the chance to go get on an airplane with the, uh, with the boys. So Man, we are looking forward to to the game on Saturday night. We're out in Regina, Saskatchewan for week one of the season. Uh, Coach, training camp in the books from an outsider's perspective, and always there's maybe a a, a bit going on that we don't, uh, that we're not privy to, but the injury report seemed to be reasonable for a training camp. Obviously, Cariel Brooks has been talked about a lot, and hopefully he can can, uh, uh, get healthy real quick, but I don't know. It seemed, seemed like you guys did a good job of managing this. Are you pleased with how that went this camp? Yeah, absolutely. Knowing that it's never going to be, you know, at zero uh, and, you know, that's always the goal as lofty as it may yeah. be, but you don't want to lose anybody. And, you know, we didn't have any, you know, season enders, quote unquote, those type of things. We did have, you know, people got banged up for, for the most part. Um, we're, we're relatively healthy and I, you know, I think we had to adjust a little bit, you know, I've maybe got a little bit wiser, uh, as, as this thing goes. And as you know, you're, you're afforded two and a half hours, but I'm not sure that we even ran one of those this year. We didn't mm-hmm. really go buzzer to buzzer. So, um, you know, and I think that's, you know, it's never a coach's thing. Cause you, you know, that we want more reps, but yeah. the, the challenge is, is the reps are run by players and people. And so mm-hmm. uh, you don't put batteries in them as you know. And, uh, so, yeah, so definitely pleased there was no long-term season enders. Um, you know, obviously unfortunate for some of the guys that did get nicked up, but I think everybody will make a, a great recovery. Yeah, that's great to hear. The uh, ugh, the ones that you don't like to say, you know, rhymes with Achilles and ACL and all that, and that kind of stuff. I, it's just so – it's just a brutal part of the sport. So to have avoided those, you know, with, you know, almost 100 guys out there, that's a that's a win on its own. I remember training camps where we felt like a guy went down every day. And mm-hmm. then I remember a camp that actually you weren't a part of in 2017 where we were doing yoga. We were, we were, I mean, the goal was literally don't get hurt. And I have to say, we got off to a bad start that year. You may have, <laughs> you may have read about that when you were down have. in the States. Yes. Uh, but I guess, I mean, it seems, it kind of seemed like a losing battle. Like you can't like if, for my time, it was like you either, go really hard and get really prepared, but lose a bunch of guys or (laughs) you take it easy. And then maybe you get off to zero and eight, like we did in uh, 2017. So does it feel like, does it, did it feel like that to you? Or do you feel like you struck a a perfect balance? Uh, Perfect is a tough word to use, but I feel like Mm. that uh, we did strike a balance uh, of sorts, if you will. And, you know, obviously there's a test at the end of every week and I'm looking forward to, you know, a real test and not a Mm. practice test. And that's, you got to find out, uh, you know, where you're at and to, to decide really where you're going. Right. We always know the end goal, as you know, around here and what we want to do weekly and ultimately at the end of the season. But there's so much that goes in between that, uh, you know, the focus just has to be on the stepping stones uh, daily. Mm. The practice tests, we 
saw two of them, including the uh, both ending in a, a last minute field goal, uh, mm-hmm. one in the tie cats favor one uh, in the opponent's favor at Guelph is two was is two enough as a coach. I always felt like you guys probably want more preseason games. Uh, I think two is enough for, yeah. yeah, I do because just our numbers at training camp, you start going more than that. And you know, you're, it's just naturally attrition is going to happen. I think you're going to slow, you know, this person's down, that person's down. Now, if the camp, all of a sudden you were able to carry a hundred people for mm-hmm. three weeks, different then I, I believe that possibly you could run three preseason games or somewhere in that neighborhood or something. But, you know, when you, when you re- reduce a roster to 75 players, um, it's probably the right amount, you know, when you take the whole, all things considered, mm-hmm. you know, everybody has their own opinion on it, but at the end of the day, you're going to end up shortening practices and then you're still going to run the risk of, it's not even the risk. It's just, you end up playing that third preseason game, possibly if we're just talking about conversation, you know, who do you play in that one, you know, after being in camp. And so if you have more bodies, then absolutely. I think it would benefit everybody from, you know, maybe longer evaluation process, but you know, there's a cost to everything that you do. So I, I like where we're at uh, for the numbers that, that we allow in camp. Yeah. As a player, I mean, I would have been fine with, hat with two quarters of a preseason game right <laughs> but as a broadcaster it's tough because i there's there's guys out there that, that we don't know anything about you know and it's so it's there's just you know it's almost like you you see you see somebody i mean i probably saw dane whatever for eight plays you know in preseason and now we're ready to call a game in sask so there's a lot of unknowns you know from from the booth but uh anyways we are excited for the uh for the kickoff of the regular season for the Thai Cats, that's this Saturday night in Regina. Uh, coach, is there any? What do you know about Sask? What What are you expecting them to do well? well? I just know that they're well coached, and I know that it's a very hostile environment there. It's mm. It's something that you actually can't prepare your football team for. You know, yeah, you can pump crowd noise and you can do different things, but you you add the emotions. You also add just fatigue. Uh, those type of things early in the seasons, you know, it's hard to be in game shape. You know, there isn't a player mm-hmm. on our team. I'll speak for our team that played in four quarters, you know, in the game. And so you can't emulate everything that that's going to happen. And that's where I think veterans and people that have been there before where you do get a little benefit, but you also get a benefit from the young guys that are fresh that are ready to go. And mm-hmm. so it's, I think that's where the balance uh, really does come in in the grand scheme of things. And uh, I know that they're they're physical up front on, on both sides of the ball. They have playmakers on offense. Uh, they're very confident defense. They're very multiple. And so we, we know that. But, shoot, that's what we're embracing. That's that's why you take the field. Like, I'm, I'm excited. Like, this is a great, great opportunity to go in there and put your best foot forward. And, and obviously like every week you, you want to come out with a win. So I'm, I'm actually excited and there really isn't an environment in the CFL really that's not hostile, but for those who have never been a part of something like this, they're going to be in for a lot of green and a lot of noise. Yeah, you are right. I, uh, I want to ask you, and this is going to put you on the spot to go back into the, uh, the Rolodex in your mind here, mm-hmm. the uh, uh, what's your, what's your best, uh, memory player coach from Regina. And I ask you this because I don't have any good ones. <laughs> I never won yeah. there. I never won. And I lost a really big one there. And so it's really sort of a, uh, not a great football, uh, memory, uh, mm-hmm. city for me. What about you? Well, we, we won a few times there as a player, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, and of course it wasn't always this new mosaic, like there was, right. there was other history and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, Man, I can remember I've been on both ends of the spectrum. I can remember a blatant pass interference in my first year, a push in the back by a player that's did very well in this league. And it wasn't called. I mean, mm. I oh, really I used, pass interference. Yes, 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 absolutely. And I just remember thinking, that's not right. That just was, you know, I was new. Mm. And, and then uh, you know, we've won, we've won one down at, when I was in Toronto. I can remember as the DB coach. Uh, we had a fourth quarter win Ricky Ray with one of his, you know, hall of fame corner routes and dropped it in there. You know, it's hard to drop a pillow and that's what I always (laughs) thought he threw, you know, anybody can catch one of those. So, you know, Ricky in the bat and, um, 
you know, and then there was, you know, the big rain out. I don't know if you were, were you with us at that time in, uh, let's see, Durant was still there. It was, I think it would have been 2012. Yeah. Okay. So that was an ouch. That was an owie. Mm. And then, uh, you know, making it there was, I just remember, forget the game, the Grey Cup game. That's not, but I just remember day one practice. Me too. How about that for a memory? And a couple of our players actually got frostbite and you hear about frostbite and it's not foreign, but then you see it and you're like, get that away from me. Like that yeah, it's was like, it's like the plague. Wow. Like it, it was, I don't know. People that live there maybe say, oh, whatever. But I'm just saying that was cold. That was nuts. That was that was cold. Like that was the fifth CFL game of my career. And about, I was okay. like, what are we doing here? Right. Uh, yeah. I couldn't believe that practice. That was so unbelievable. We might have been, we might as well have been at the North Pole. It was nuts. It was right next door to Santa Claus. I mean, we were right there. And it, we, was, it, it was, it was, so that's a memory I have. It was, it yeah. was beyond cold. It's a foot. Yeah. It's a, it's not a winning memory for mine, but it is an interesting football memory. And I, that whole week, it's like, gets light at like, I don't know. 9 30 9 45 10 15 in the morning so like we were waking up in the pitch black yep. getting breakfast like like you had to cover your face so you didn't like you know it was it was like we were on mars man it was nuts that was that was that was an interesting week and then i have to, to bring it back to week one the fall six months later 2014 season we was july 4th was the first game of the season in regina and i'll and i remember because they played the american national anthem i thought that was a really really cool thing of the league to do. There's a lot of uh, Americans up there and I thought that was really great. And then we got our heads kicked in again, whatever, 47 to seven or something. I did score a touchdown in that game. That was nice. old mosaic stadium, uh, right. but awesome football city, regardless of how my experiences went there. Uh, really, really exciting place to, for you guys to, uh, to start the season coach 2022 tie cats. Can you give us, Give us a, a motto. What's the theme for this team? You, you, you were always so great at sort of uh, controlling the story and the attitude of a football team. And what is this team thinking about? What are you hammering into their heads about going into this year? Well, without giving you the complete inside, even though you'll get it out of me at some point, I, I just really believe that we need to understand that this is 2022. There's not any carryover in the win loss columns. Nobody's going to, give you any wins, not because you're Hamilton, not because of the returning players you have. There's three teams that aren't going to make the playoffs. That's the bottom line. And so I think our key thing is to, to build our foundation. Let's not worry about the, the other stuff, but let's, let's build the foundation before we get to the fun stuff. And it's a very elementary thing, but it's easy to look down the road and, you know, say uh, all these things are kind of understood. So we've kind of not taken any of that for granted. And, uh, and I'm talking every step of the organization from therapy to video to equipment, don't assume anything. Let's make sure our foundation's right. And then let's uh, see who, who we're going to end up taking on this journey in 2022. That's awesome, man. The, uh, I, I did it so many ways. We started zero and eight and still had a chance at the playoffs. Didn't get there, but we were close. Like we were playing pretty decent football at the end of that season mm -hmm. 2019 you and i we, we were sort of we were sort of riding the the tidal wave through through the season at that year and that was my only experience on that really positive number one in the east the whole way type of thing so many times we were we started off slow but boy was it easier in 2019 that year <laughs> you know when we got off when we got off quick and kind of we're at the top and stayed at the top and Hope I hope hope that for you guys as well. Though it's though you can do it a thousand ways, that's the easiest way to do it. So, I'm in. I'm in. I'll push my chips all in on that one. Good, that's pretty yeah. good. No, oh, that's great. All right, last most last question, but uh, my favorite one. What's your what's your uh, Regina Steakhouse? Where are you going to be on uh, Friday night? Uh, golf's. We'll go yeah. to golf's and get. I don't think you can go wrong there. I've always had a good bite there. Agreed. That is that is the spot. The uh, I'll never forget sitting there with Bakari Grant. Uh, it might have been, was it Jeremiah before that 2013 gray cup and a marching band of green fans came marching right through the restaurant at golf. So we were trying to have our pre-dinner. It was a silly place, I guess, to have to, for a tie cat to have a pre-dinner uh, or pre gray cup uh, dinner the night before, but another good Regina football experience. It's, it's quite the, uh, quite the place and excited to see the uh, 2022 tie cats kick off the season there Saturday night. 
coach have a great uh, rest of your day three and uh, travel day tomorrow. I will look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday night in Regina. Thanks Luke. Another episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker is in the books. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at gamedayatiecats.ca. Coach O and Luke are back next week to discuss the latest from the locker room. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.